Well guys, the blockbuster season or the summer movie season of 2024 has finally concluded guys. We had such a great summer movie season this year. There's so many big surprises. There's so many great movies that came out the summer movie season of the year. Now it's over. Let's talk about the movies that I'm anticipating throughout the fall movie season of 2024 or the rest of 2024. Now this is just my personal list guys. These are the movies that I'm personally anticipating for throughout the rest of this year. If you don't like any of the movies on the list, that's totally fine. Or if you just think there is a movie that should be on there, give me your opinion in the comments below. What are your top 10 most anticipated movies throughout the rest of 2024? These are just my personal list. This is the movies that I'm actually looking forward to throughout the rest of this year. So, no further ado guys, you know the rules. I mostly do this every year. Actually, it's for last year. I apologize I didn't do this video last year, but now I'm bringing it back this year. Let's talk about the movies that I'm anticipating for for the rest of 2024. Starting off, of course, with some honorable mentions. Starting off with Megalopolis. This is Francis Ford Coppola's new movie. Apparently, it's getting very mixed reviews, but I'm really curious to see how this movie turns out. Craven the Hunter. Paddington in Peru. Smile 2, Speak No Evil, Never Let Go, Flight Risk, Mel Gibson's new directed film with Mark Warburg, Red 1, Mufasa the Lion King, don't kill me for that, I love the Lion King, I'm really curious to see how this prequel goes, Superman the Christopher Reeve story, Venom the Last Dance, and the one that's actually pretty close to my top 10 and that is The Wild Robot. Those honorable mentions I'm very anticipating for throughout the rest of the year and hopefully these movies succeeded. But of course they didn't make it into my top 10 list. So let's get into the 10 movies that I'm mostly looking forward to throughout the rest of 2024. Starting off with my number 10 is Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. Now the reason why I'm putting this very low on my list is because it's coming out this week. And these are the movies that I'm looking forward to throughout the rest of the year from October, November and December. But of course... Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I need to put it on there because I am a fan of the original Beetlejuice. That film is a Tim Burton classic and of course Tim Burton is coming back to direct this with Michael Keaton reprising his role as Beetlejuice 30 years later. That is something to be excited for. The trailers actually really do impress me. All the original cast is returned from Winona Ryder returning from Catherine O'Hara and we got some new people from Jenna Ortega, Willem Dafoe. Just a great amount of people that are in this movie. Especially that this movie looks so old school Tim Burton with practical effects and stuff. It looks like Tim Burton is basically coming back to his game that he was back in the day. And with all the great legacy sequels that came out this year, I'm really curious to see how Beetlejuice Beetlejuice goes. I'm not expecting this to be as great as the original, but I want this to be a really fun follow-up to the first movie. So Tim Burton, we need you back because his past movies right now these days haven't been all that great. So, let's hope Beetlejuice Beetlejuice bring back his prime. Speaking of prime, coming into my number 9 is Transformers 1, the latest animated Transformers movie that's coming out. And I'm curious about this movie. From the trailers of the movie, the movie looks beautiful when it comes to the animation. And this is actually the Transformers movie we've been waiting for, a movie that's just about the Transformers. No human characters whatsoever. And this is basically an origin story of how Optimus Prime and Megatron became enemies. How's that not interesting? And yes, it's a very interesting casting with Chris Hansworth playing Optimus Prime and Brian Tyree Henry playing Megatron. But honestly, throughout the trailers, I feel like this casting is actually pretty good and I feel like they're going to nail these roles with King and Michael King and Scarlett Johansson in it. The animation looks absolutely fantastic. It's also the origin story of how the Transformers transform in general that's also very interesting. And from the early reviews this movie has been getting... It's getting really good early reviews, so I'm really excited to see how Transformers 1 brings us. And this is coming from the guy that grown up with Transformers as a kid, growing up with the Michael Bay movies, so of course, Transformers always holds a very special place to my heart. So let's see how this animated Transformers movie goes. Maybe this could be the next Into the Spider-Verse, a movie that we're not expecting to be as good as it is. Coming into my number 8 is Nosferatu. This is Robert Eggers' latest film that's coming out, and of course, how am I not excited for that? Robert Eggers, man. I love this director from The Witch, from The Lighthouse, from The Northman. Just every single movie that Robert Eggers directed has been flawless to me. And especially that he's tackling on basically one of the most famous silent films of all time. 
I'm in. And I had a chance to see the original Nosferatu, the original silent film, and it's actually really freaking good. And it makes me more excited to see how this film brings us. With Bill Starsky playing the role, with Lily Rose Depp, Nicholas Holt, Willem Dafoe of course is in it because it's Robert Eggers. Just what a great casting. And from that first teaser trailer, I am totally in. I'm actually really excited to see what Bill Starsky looks like as an Osferatu because we didn't see his official look or any set photos of him. So I cannot wait to see what he looks like. But obviously this movie looks very terrifying. It definitely looks very intense. This movie is actually coming out in January next year, but hopefully... Hopefully there's a very early screening for this film because I really want to see Nosferatu and possibly want this movie to be my favorite movies of 2024 because it is a 2024 movie, but goddamn Australia release dates I have to move Oscar worthy films to January. Just freaking why? Coming into my number seven is Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Of course, this needs to be on my list, especially after the trailer that just came out recently. Man, I really enjoyed the first two Sonic the Hedgehog movies, especially the second one. It's actually my favourite in the series because it just pays so much homage to the Sonic games. And now we're having Keanu Reeves as Shadow. What a fucking great casting. Ever since that end credit scene of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 that we're officially getting Shadow and we're curious about who's going to voice cast, man, Keanu Reeves voicing over Shadow... How is this movie not going to be my most anticipated movies for the rest of the year? The movie looks fine, it looked exciting, it looks like it's still going back paying tribute to the Sonic games, and the movie looks the most intense out of the Sonic movies, and also Jim Carrey is coming back out of the retirement that we thought he's going to have. Jim Carrey is officially playing Dr. Eggman once again, and I find it very interesting that we get to see Sonic teaming up with Dr. Eggman in this one. But of course I'm interested to see the boundary between Sonic and Shadow in this movie. Keanu Reeves is such a great casting. The action scenes look awesome. And of course, it's Sonic the Hedgehog. I just think the first two movies are freaking awesome movies. So hopefully this is a great third time to charm movie. Coming into my number six is Gladiator 2. Now, I'm going to be honest here. I wasn't planning on putting this movie on my list. Because I wasn't really too impressed by the trailer. But there are some great movies that have very terrible trailers out there. So I'm going to give Gladiator 2 a chance. And especially that Ridley Scott is still going to direct this movie. That is interesting. But the more times I'm seeing the trailer, the more times it grew on me. Especially that Paul Mescal is going to be in the movie. And he looks like he's going to steal the entire movie. He looks completely badass in this film. With, of course, Pedro Mescal... Dazdell Washington, like, it's still a really good casting. Hopefully this is another legacy sequel that pays so much homage to the first movie, but also doing a really good story in general. But this definitely looks like a follow-up. It looks like a great follow-up to the first Gladiator movie. And of course, Gladiator is one of my favorite movies, so that's why I was a bit skeptical for this movie, because I don't want this to ruin the nostalgia that I loved about the first Gladiator movie. But the movie looks interesting, the action looks awesome, the movie looks beautiful, like this definitely does look like Gladiator, and really Scott is really good at directing scopes in movies. But just from that terrible trailer, I wasn't too sure about but you know what, like I said, there are some good movies that have terrible trailers, so Gladiator 2 can have potential for being good, and that's why I'm gonna give Gladiator 2 a chance here. All right guys, we're up to the top five. These are the five movies that I am mostly looking forward to throughout the rest of the year, and hopefully they end up 2020 fantastically. Coming into my number five is Moana 2. Of course, the first Moana is fantastic. And I'm not going to lie, I didn't know they're going to make a sequel to Moana this year. That's amazing. It's kind of weird that we're getting a sequel to Moana and we're getting a live action remake of Moana next year. It's a bit of a weird gap here, but I gotta say, throughout the trailer of Moana 2, especially the new trailer that just came out in D23, Man, this movie looks like it could be a sequel that surpasses the original. Of course, Ali Ikravali and Dwayne Johnson are coming back reprising their roles as Moana and Maui. Awesome, we can't have Moana without them too. Curious to see where the story goes on. Moana meeting her ancestors. What are her ancestors? So many questions. I'm interested in it. The animation looks even top notch than the first movie. Can't wait to hear the new songs in the movie. Cannot wait to see Moana's adventure going on. I'm just really excited to see where the characters go in this movie and hopefully it definitely ups the stakes than the first movie. Hopefully this is another one of those Disney movies that have the songs that are stuck in our heads because Disney is really good at that. Even though the songs are not going to be written by Lil Mora Miranda in this one because he is doing Mufasa this year. I'm still interested to see what the new songs are, but of course I cannot wait to see Moana on this latest adventure. I'm definitely seeing this movie in IMAX, that's for sure, especially from the look of the animation here. But that is not my most anticipated anime film throughout the rest of the year, because my number four goes to The Lord of the Rings, The War of Rohirrim. Man, 
I love Lord of the Rings. It is one of my favorite movie franchises of all time. So we're getting a anime prequel to the Lord of the Rings trilogy. How is that not freaking interesting and gets you curious about it? Because throughout the first trailer, I'm not going to lie, the anime looks absolutely spectacular. This so far looks like the best animation that I'm seeing this year. And I'm really curious to see what the story of this movie is going to be and how it ties in with the Lord of the Rings. It's about the ninth king of the Reherim. That's going to be very interesting. But just from the anime, the animation is really cool. And I'm not the biggest like anime fan, but I'm not going to lie. From the look of this movie, it's going to be an IMAX and I'm definitely in for that. Because come on. Seeing an anime Lord of the Rings movie in IMAX, that is pretty freaking interesting. But the story looks awesome. The action looks actually very spectacular. Some people are mixed by the first trailer. I really do love the first trailer. I'm just like, you know what? They're doing something completely different with this. And I'm totally on board with it. But this is coming from the guy that loves the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And this gives me an excuse to review the Lord of the Rings movies. Absolutely. But I'm really curious to see how this ties in with the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. This movie kept me with some questions. So I'm really interested to see how this movie goes. This kind of looks like the anime version of Game of Thrones in a way. I'm so excited to go back to Middle Earth once again. Especially in IMAX. This is definitely my most anticipated anime film throughout the rest of this year. Coming into my number three is a complete unknown. This is James Mangold's latest music biopic film that's coming out. He directed one of my favorite music biopic movies of all time, Walk the Line, which he did Johnny Cash justice. So let's see how he does with Bob Dylan and Timothy Chalamet. Of course, man. Come on. Like, how is that not want you to go see the movie? Because it's Timothy Chalamet. He's just a great actor. He steals the show as Paul Atreides in Dude Part 2. And man, maybe he will get two memorable performances in a row as Bob Dylan. He looks like he's going to absolutely crush it here with Edward Norton, Ellie Fanning. Just great casting all around. And just from that first teaser, I just feel like this is going to be kind of like an improvement of what happened with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I just feel like James Mangon need a redemption here because Indiana Jones and Dollar Destiny, of course, is one of the most disappointing movies of last year. And tackling on another music biopic since Walk the Line, I'm totally on board with it. I'm not the biggest, like, Bob Dylan fan, but I like some of his music, so I love seeing a biopic about artists that I haven't even heard of. So, of course, what's not to lose? I'm really curious to see how Bob Dylan's story comes about. Cannot wait to see Timothy Chalamet's performance. And cannot wait to see how James Mango is going to direct this one. Now, two and one, honestly, those two could have been tied together. Because I am excited for both of those two movies. And here's a clue. They're actually both musicals. And I am a fan of musicals. So, which order those two movies are going to be? Coming into my number two is Wicked. I am totally on board with this movie. I actually have seen the Wicked stage show this year. What a great timing. Seeing the stage play in the same year that I'm going to see the movie later on this November. And I gotta say, Wicked is in my opinion right now one of my favorite Broadway musicals of all time. Love that musical. And it's one of those musicals that sees things in a whole new way. It made me see The Wizard of Oz in a whole new way. It's one of the most best villain origin stories that's ever put on. So of course, with this Wicked movie, the highly anticipated musical movie that we've been waiting for, from the trailers, it looks like it knows what it's doing, trying to pay so much tribute to the source material, but just put it on the big screen. And of course, Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo, those two are going to be one of the most memorable castings of this year, I have a feeling. Those two actors are going to kill in their roles as Glinda and Afropa. Cannot wait to see how the songs are translated into this film. The movie looks beautiful and great casting from Ariana Grande, Cynthia Erivo with Michelle Yeoh and Jeff Goldblum as the freaking Wizard of Oz. Just, what a casting. But from the trailers, it looks like it knows what it's doing. It definitely feels like I am seeing Wicked in movie form. The movie looks absolutely beautiful. Cannot wait to see how the songs are portrayed, especially Popular and Defying Gravity. I cannot wait to see that. And this is actually a part one of a splitting into two part Wicked movie. So, oh my God, I cannot wait to see the story much more explored. Maybe explore more characters and even this movie could have some new songs. Really interested in that. Of course, Wicked is one of the biggest Broadway musicals of all time. So there's a bigger, big shoes to fill with John M. Chu. But he directed In the Heights. Love that movie so much. So hopefully, this movie will end up high on my favorite movies of the year. But guys, we are at my number one. This is my most anticipated film throughout the rest of 2024. And of course, that movie is Joker for Lee Al Dool. Man, of course. 
I think this will be everyone's number one of the rest of the year because, come on, the sequel to 2019's Joker. To me, my favourite movie that came out in 2019, that film, blew me away, especially Walking Phoenix. He completely crushes it in this role. And of course, with Todd Phillips coming back, with Walking Phoenix returning for a Joker sequel, I'm looking forward to that throughout the very beginning. Especially now we're getting Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. Wow, and this movie is going to be a completely different movie than the first movie because this movie is actually going to be a jukebox musical. And from the new trailers, I got a feeling this is going to be one of the most memorable musical soundtracks of this year. This movie looks darker than the first one, this movie looks more disturbing than the first one, but I gotta say, Walking Phoenix and Lady Gaga, I think them two are going to steal the rest of this year. They look like they're going to absolutely crush it in their roles. I'm really curious to see Arthur Fleck's story in this one, how it's going to continue on with the first Joker, and why this movie is a musical. It's a very different twist and turn. But of course, Todd Phillips coming back to direct. Let's hope he does this movie justice. This could be possibly my favorite movie of the year over Dune, over freaking Furiosa. This movie definitely has potential. I feel like this movie can be my favorite movie of the year. And this could be maybe an Oscar contender for Lady Gaga. That would have been cool if Lady Gaga gets nominated for Best Actress in this one. This looks like this could be her best performance in her entire acting career. But of course, I cannot wait to see what the musical sequences are. I cannot wait to see how Arthur Fleck's story goes on Walking Phoenix. Of course, he's going to nail it once again. But of course, with this Joker sequel from the new trailer, the more times I've seen the trailer, the more times I'm excited. And I'm already planning to see this in 50-70mm in IMAX. Absolutely. This is my most anticipated film throughout the rest of 2024. So guys, that is my most anticipated movies throughout the rest of 2024. Let me know in the comments below what are your picks. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you guys follow me on social media links down below. Keep contact with me and make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. Notify for my latest movie reviews and other movie related content. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a nice day.